Hi, I'm Yushang from Cornell. Today I'm going to present SUSI, which is a new programming model for generating high performance systolic arrays on FPGAs. This work is in collaboration with Intel, Peking University, Tsinghua University, and UCLA. To begin with, let me briefly talk about systolic algorithms. All systolic algorithms share the same property that is uniform data dependency. In other words, all data dependence distances are constant. With such property, we can easily map systolic algorithms to spatial architectures, which is usually called systolic arrays. A systolic array is composed of processing elements, or PEs. An example is shown on the right-hand side. In this figure, in this systolic array, we have nine PEs in total. As can be seen in the animation, each PE processes data rhythmically. And with the massive parallelism bring by the systolic array, we can usually gen achieve high performance on hardware. Systolic arrays are used in many important domains, for example, linear algebra, deep learning, and bioinformatics. There are also several high performance systolic arrays implemented on hardware, for example, TPUs, and also on ASICs and on FPGAs. However, in order to really achieve high performance on the hardware, usually we need to apply a set of spatial optimizations. The first one is about data parallelism. For example, loop and rolling can decide the shape and size of the systolic arrays. In order to further improve the parallelism, we can apply data vectorization. However, it doesn't mean that the more PE you have, the better performance you can get. One thing that we need to take care of is the data communication. For example, how we feed the data into the PEs by using custom IO network. And sometimes we also need to design our custom buffer and then also to decide the correct data layout in order to achieve high memory bandwidth. To think about it, actually FPGA is a good platform to implement all of this optimization. The figure I'm showing here is an FPGA that is used on AWS F1. Although this is not the latest FPGA, we can already see that there's a lot of compute power. For example, it has around 2 million logic blocks or a lot. And if you are not familiar with that, you can implement a bit counter, uh, an A-bit adder using around eight lookup tables. So now you can imagine how many compute we can implement using 2 million lookup tables. You know, in addition, FPGA also provides high performance per watt. So it is actually very well suited for systolic arrays. But FPGAs are really hard to program. For example, if you want to implement an A-bit counter, in RTO code, you need to write around 20 lines of code. But with the introduction of high-level synthesis, or HOS, now we only need to write four lines of code. And if we search high-level synthesis and FPGA on Google Scholar, you can see that there is an increasing trend um, around and now we have like around more than 9,000 papers since 2014. And another advantage of HOS is that you can actually cover or capture all the spatial optimization that we mentioned before. For example, on the right-hand side is an optimized, uh, a code snippet from an optimized HOS code. Here, we, here I also highlight all the spatial optimization that is, it is used. For example, factorization, uh, custom IO network and also loop and rolling. However, it might not be clear to you that what this program is about. And it is actually just a very simple general matrix multiplication. And why the program is so hard to uh, uh, know what it's doing is because the algorithm specification is closely entangled with spatial optimization. And this also makes our program less portable, less maintainable, and also less productive. So if we try to plot HOS and other existing uh, programming frameworks for systolic array on this graph, um, first, uh, the x-axis is for productivity, the y-axis is for performance, and we also have another spectrum for uh, generality from uh, low to high. So for HOS, or like in this case, the Ninja HOS, which is uh, manually optimized HOS code, it, has, it definitely has a uh, high performance and also high generality. However, the productivity is lower as we mentioned in the previous slides because of the entangled hardware specification, the algorithm specification and also 
spatial optimization. So in order to solve that, there are some lines of recent work that focus on uh, decoupled optimizations. For example, HashRoSeal proposed to decouple hardware customizations from algorithm specification. With that, you can achieve high productivity and also high generality at the same time. However, the performance is um, limited. On the other hand, there are work like T2S Tensor, which also decouple the spatial optimizations from the temporal definition. However, as you can see, although you can achieve high productivity and also high performance, the generality is compromised because T2S Tensor can only focus on a gem-like kernel or matrix multiplication-like kernel. And finally, there are other words that sit in between. For example, polyester say you can achieve a medium productivity and also medium generality while also having high performance. So our goal or the, our proposed uh, program model SUSI here is that we want to achieve both high performance, high productivity, and also high generality. So let me give you a brief overview on SUSI. SUSI is productive because we decouple the algorithm definitions from the spatial optimization. Also, we are efficient because we can explicitly represent all spatial optimizations like space-time transformations to generate a high efficient hardware. And finally, we are flexible because we can describe a rich set of systolic algorithms using UREs, which we will give you, which I will give you more details in the later slides. So in general, with the three above points, we uh, SUSI is a programming model for constructing high performance systolic arrays. And why there are another reason that why we call our framework SUSI. So if you are eating like a piece of SUSI, it is composed of a white rice and also ingredient. The white rice itself is for like the body or the algorithm definition. But what makes the SUSI delicious is the ingredients like the tuna, the cucumber. And to make a systolic array high performance is we need to apply a set of spatial optimizations. And also we generate systolic arrays with a lot of PEs, right? It's just like when we eat sushi, we, only, we always eat many pieces at the same time. So now let me give you more details on uh, the sushi framework. To begin with, our algorithm definition is described using uniform recurrence equations or UREs. A system of UREs can concisely describe any systolic algorithm. And the reason is that a system of UREs is actually just an n-dimensional iteration space with constant data dependence. So if you still remember, the property of a systolic algorithm is uniform data dependence. So let me show you an example using our measured multiplication. On the right hand side is the code, is the C code for describing metric multiplication. Here we times uh, multiply A with B and the output is C. To represent that in SUSI, we can use two UREs. And the select here is like a ternary operation if then else. So to interpret that, we can say that uh, this select is if K equals to zero, then we return zero. Otherwise we return this uh, variable. So to interpret this URE is it's actually very simple. The Z here is an intermediate value or the intermediate sum for each step of accumulation. So if K equals to zero, we set the sum to be zero. Otherwise we accumulate from the previous sum and then add a new a multiplication result. And finally, when K equals to the last K, then we can uh, then we return our sum as our final result C. And UREs can be very powerful in that you can also describe other like more complicated examples like insertion sort and also Smith Waterman. So now knowing how we can describe our algorithm, the next thing is that we want to map or project our algorithm to a real physical systolic array. And to do that, we need to introduce our first spatial optimization, that is space-time transformation. As I mentioned, so this uh, transformation can help us project an n-dimensional space into physical systolic arrays. To do that, we will need a transformation matrix T, which is composed of a time matrix tau and also a space matrix pi. 
So again, let me use the uh, same uh, uh, metric multiplication as an example. Here I select the t uh, with uh, uh, tau and pi. And actually there are some rules in order to uh, select a valid uh, transformation matrix. So, but uh, because of the time constraint, for more details, please refer to our paper. So with this uh, transformation matrix, we can actually derive the new space dimensions or the actual physical space dimensions by multiplying the space matrix pi with our iteration domain i, j, k, and the result is i and j. So now we can actually map our UREs to a 2D systolic array with i and j as the space dimension. And the next thing that we need to do is we need to derive the time schedule by multiplying tau or the time matrix with our iteration domain. In this case, it is i plus j plus k. So what that means is that for this PE, it is going to process the data as t equals to i plus j plus k or e t equals to k. And these two PE will be uh, computed as t equals to k plus one and then so on. So as you can see, the PEs are processing data in a rhythmical way as we sh we've shown in the animation at the first slide. So now knowing the, uh, how we describe uh, um, our algorithm with UIEs and also our uh, spatial optimization with uh, space and transform, now we can uh, do some simple uh, design space exploration. So in this case, this is the uh, same systolic array that we get from the previous slides, right? But one thing that you can observe is that it might not be ideal for hardware because of the bro data broadcasting of the inputs. So in this case, we have A broadcast to these two PEs and B also broadcast to these two PEs. So this is actually not scalable. So in order to solve that, we can actually introduce data reuse by propagating our input data from the neighbor PEs. So we do not need the broadcasting. So if we compare this uh, two different set of uh, UREs, then we can see that actually without data reuse, we are using fewer intermediate variables or less area. But with data broadcasting, we might need, or we might have a worse performance. And on the other hand, with data reuse, we have better performance, but use more area. So this is actually a trade-off between area and performance. So now let me show you how we uh, can actually describe the URIs and uh, our spatial optimizations using our SUSE programming model. So first, uh, our algorithm definition is uh, built upon a uh, halide, which is a declarative programming language for uh, describing like uh, image pipeline applications. So what we do is that we extend halide semantics in order, to in order to support UREs. So as you can see here, these are UREs with data reuse as I've shown in the previous slides. And then as I mentioned, SUSE cleanly decouple the spatial optimizations from the algorithm definition. So we have a separate, so in addition to the algorithm definitions, we define our uh, spatial optimizations separately. For example, this is how we specify space and transform. So with this kind of decoupled uh, programming style, we are more portable, more productive, and also more maintainable. And this is a list of other spatial, uh, other supported uh, spatial optimizations. And uh, for more details, please also refer to our paper. But what I want to show you here is that you can see that we actually support a rich set of uh, spatial optimizations for describing uh, our custom IO network, which is extremely important in order to generate high performance historic arrays. So next, let me show you our uh, compilation flow. So given a SUSE program, we will first lower it to extended HALA IR, where we perform all the spatial optimizations specified by the users. And then we also automatically uh, apply several target specific optimizations like loop, loop infinitization and loop flattening. And then we generate HLS code. After that, we rely on the HLS compiler to uh, deploy our application to our physical uh, systolic arrays on FPGAs. So now uh, let me talk about our experiment. For uh, 
our FPGAs under evaluation, we have two FPGAs that will be used. One is the Intel Area 10, the other one is Silence uh, View 9P. For SUSE, we currently uh, support Area 10, but it is also very easy for us to extend to other FPGA boards. And the main thing that I want to uh, let you know here is that uh, actually these two boards have a similar computation power because like for a multiply accumulation operation or a Mac operation, to implement a Mac operation on Intel FPGA, it requires one DSP. Well, for Xilinx, it requires five DSP. So if we compare the DSP number, we can see that it has like uh, actually similar computation power. So first let's us uh, take a look at the general evaluation. Um, we are very flexible because uh, we can uh, describe benchmark from a rich set of uh, systolic algorithm with UREs. And as you can see here, we have uh, SGEM from linear algebra, we have uh, TTM from tensor algebra, we have convolution from deep learning, and we have uh, Smith Waterman from bioinformatics. And as you can see, SUSE is the only framework that can support all of the, these benchmarks. And then next, if we compare uh, if we take a look at the number of lines of code, we are only using tens of lines of code to describe all of these benchmarks, including both uh, spatial optimization and temporal definition. So that's also proof that our framework is very productive. And now let me use a case study to further explain why SUSE is uh, so flexible. So uh, for Smith Waterman, uh, this is a benchmark from, from uh, bioinformatics. We need to actually skew the iteration space or we need, or in other words, we need to apply space-time transform in order to achieve high performance. And SUSE is the only framework that can map Smith-Waterman to high performance systolic array because for T2S tensor, it only support gem-like kernels and it cannot uh, describe space-time transform. For PolySA, it is not flexible enough to support dynamic control flows, which is required in Smith-Waterman. And for spatial and heterosexual, although they can uh, describe Smith-Waterman, but they cannot map Smith-Waterman to systolic array. And that is why, as you can see in this table, although uh, we have some performance number with uh, spatial and heterosexual, the performance is actually worse than SUSE because we actually map them to high-performance uh, systolic array. And for uh, PoSA and TWS tensor, because they cannot even uh, uh, describes means what I mean, so that's why I do not show them in this table. So next, uh, after knowing our flexibility and also our uh, productivity, so we can now focus on the performance evaluation. So first, let us compare with uh, uh, manually optimized uh, HLS code or Ninja HLS. So we can see that we're only using like 30x fewer lines of code in order to achieve like around 86% throughput of Ninja HLS. And if we compare like a frameworks that target systolic arrays and framework that do not target systolic array like spatial, we can see that there is actually a big gap between those implemented with systolic arrays and those are not, All right? And finally, if we compare to other state-of-the-art systolic array frameworks, we are actually achieve similar performance, for example, here uh, in terms of both throughputs and also DSP efficiency. So finally, SUSE is productive because we cleanly decouple everything definition from spatial optimization. So again, like when you're eating SUSE, we have a white rice or everything definitions as our base and our ingredient like tuna and cucumber for our um, optimization, right? And then we're also efficient because we can uh, generate high performance systolic arrays by explicitly representing uh, spatial optimizations like space and transformation. And finally, we are flexible because we can describe a rich set of systolic algorithm with UREs. So, uh, if you still remember this uh, diagram, we can now safely plot SUSE here because we re indeed have high productivity and also high generality and also high performance. Thank you.